Why you look so sore? Audiences love lots of gore. You know, this is the fourth Patty's Day since I started doing this show, and somehow I've never gotten into the Leprechaun franchise. Which is a shame, really, because it's the most 90s franchise of them all. It had all the 90s cliches. There was one in LA, one in Vegas, one in space, two in the hood, and the first one was the one with Jennifer Aniston. Now that the franchise has gone full Halloween and created a direct sequel to the original film, ignoring the canon established by all those movies in between, it seems only fitting to spend this St. Patrick's Day reviewing the series. Now, it all started when creator Mark Jones decided to make the jump from TV to film and setting his sights on horror, decided to make a cross between the Lucky Charms mascot and Critters, which, when you hear it, makes so much sense regarding the tone of these movies. The first one was a pretty straightforward movie about an evil leprechaun. Guy steals a pot of gold from said leprechaun. Leprechaun follows him back to the U.S. and gets trapped in a crate. Years later, Jennifer Aniston's family moves in and her friend mistakenly frees him. And things get all kinds of murdery from there. Like I said, it's exactly what you expect from an evil leprechaun movie. For the second one, things step up their 90s-ness because nothing said 1990s like setting a sequel in Los Angeles. But of course, let's also break out the old standard of supernatural beings stumbles on a girl in modern times who is a descendant of their ancient love. One of my other favorite things about the leprechaun series is that they give zero fucks about continuity film to film. He gets blown up in the first one, impaled on wrought iron in the second one, and then the third one opens up with him having been transformed into a statue thanks to a magic medallion. It's like they were actively trying to be the tropiest horror series of all time. And they actually might have been. Number three opens up in Vegas, and the leprechaun, in statue form, obviously, has been sold to the Pawn Stars or something. And guess what they do right away? They take off the medallion so he comes back to life and goes on a rampage searching for gold coins in Las Vegas. This was also the first time one of the sequels went direct to video, which is also one of the most 90s things you can do. Now, I am pretty sure that there's a rule that if you are a horror franchise that operated in the late 90s, you had to go to space. Jason did it, Pinhead did it, so I can't blame the Leprechaun franchise here. They were just following the rules, but what they did when they got there? Oh boy. <sighs> yeah. Leprechaun in space. It takes place a hundred years in the future and the Leprechaun is trying to hook up with an alien princess. This whole movie is insane. At one point, the Leprechaun transforms himself into the clap and then bursts out of a guy's penis. And honestly, I don't know what else I can say about a movie where that happens. So part five. Yeah, also bonkers, and despite being made in 2000, it's still super 90s. It features Ice-T as Mac Daddy Onassis coming across the Leprechaun in the statue form from the beginning of part three and stealing a golden flute to become a successful music producer. I'm gonna be honest here, I haven't seen this thing in a very long time, but even the synopsis is problematic. And the worst part is, even after the Leprechaun rap at the end, yeah, you heard me. They still decide they need a second Leprechaun in the Hood movie. Now, in all fairness, Leprechaun Back to the Hood, you know what? No. They use the number two and spelled the with an A there. There's no fairness. Let's just move on because by the time they finished that one, we were even at a point where Warwick Davis was done with the franchise. And so was everyone else. There was one weird reboot thing with Hornswoggle from the WWE, but raise your hand if you saw that one. Exactly. However, that brings us to the latest entry, which is the one that's going full Halloween. It picks up 25 years after the original film and forgets all the sequels which I think is really something we should all be jealous of its ability to do. Leprechaun Returns is actually a sci-fi movie. Not the genre, but the TV network. And for some reason, they released it just before Christmas. It has Lila, daughter of Jennifer Aniston's Tori from the first film, heading back to the cabin again from the first film because her and her friends want to tear it down and build a sorority house in the middle of nowhere. Despite warnings from Ozzy, played again by Mark Holton, who will always be Chubbs from Teen Wolf to me, the girls inadvertently awaken the Leprechaun, who proceeds to go on a murderous rampage searching for his gold. You know, really getting back to the basics which after the rest of the movies is actually a welcome change. Now, like I said, this aired on Sci-Fi in December, so you can't be blamed for missing it, but now is as good a time and arguably a more seasonable time as any to check it out. And let us know what you think. Is the latest film a return of Leprechaun? What's your favorite movie in the franchise? Let us know in the comments, and remember, Fright Hype and Crypt TV are all over the internet. Until next time, keep the horror on the screen and off the streets. Watch new vids every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday only on Crypt TV.